Hi, I'm Ken Nesbitt, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a form of poetry called a syncane. Uh, a form, by the way, is just a word that poets use to mean a kind or a type or a style of poems. And this particular poem we're going to be talking about today is called a syncane. Now, um, I'm going to tell you what a syncane is and who created it and what the rules are for writing a syncane so that you can write your own. And then we're going to walk through a couple of examples so that you can see how syncanes are created very, very easily. So let's get started, shall we? Started. First, I want to answer the question, what is a syncane? A syncane is a poetic form that is a kind of poem that's very short and very easy to write. Uh, syncanes are only five lines long, and an entire syncane only has 22 syllables, and that is partly what makes them so easy to write. Now, I should also mention that I know the name looks like it should be pronounced synquane because of that Q-U in the middle, but it's actually pronounced syncane. It was invented uh, just a little over a hundred years ago in 1911 by this woman here. Her name was Adelaide Crapsey. She was an American poet and she wrote a lot of syncanes. In fact, well, she invented the form. Now, the reason she invented this form is that there are poetic forms in Japanese like haiku and tanka that are very short and very simple. And she wanted to create her own American form that was similar to those, but unique. And um, the, the syncane is shaped almost like a, a diamante poem, which is sort of a diamond shape, or uh, maybe a little bit like a Christmas tree. And I'll show you as we go along where you place your syllables to get that unique diamond shape of a syncane. Uh, oh, and by the way, the name Syncane, where it comes from uh, is it's because the poem is five lines long, she chose the French word for five. And the French word for five is sunk. But um, of course, it doesn't look like sunk to Americans. It looks like sink. And so that's why she called the poem the Syncane. So in a Syncane, you don't just write down 22 syllables and you're done you need to place them in a certain order. So the first line of a syncane has just two syllables. The next line has four syllables. The next line has six syllables. The fourth line has eight syllables. And then we go right back down to two syllables. So you can see you start with two and you add two more and two more and two more. And then you just drop back down to only two syllables. Uh, so when you write a syncane, your syllable counts look something like this. And there's that Christmas tree shape that I was talking about. So I want to give you uh, an example of a syncane that I wrote. Now, you can write syncanes about anything, absolutely anything. But, you know, it's always fun to write a poem about something that you like. And I happen to particularly like ice cream. And so I decided to write a syncane just called ice cream. Now remember, the first line of a syncane only needs two syllables. And it happens that ice cream is two syllables. So I thought, well, that will make a great first line for my syncane. Now in the next line, I need four syllables and I wanna start describing ice cream. So I said, cold and tasty. Now you see that's only three words, but it's four syllables because the word tasty has two syllables, right? You could count them on your fingers and go cold and tasty. There you are. Um, and then I wanted to throw in some, uh, some adjectives, right? Some descriptive words besides just cold and tasty. I wanted to make them um, more like uh, adverbs, right? Action words. So I put melting, dripping, pleasing. And you'll notice that each of those is two syllables and there's three words. So that's six syllables altogether. Melting, dripping, pleasing. Now I've got to get eight syllables in the next line. It feels so good in my tummy. Yummy. 
<laughs> Look at that. I even threw a little rhyme in there. Uh, uh, sing canes don't need to rhyme, but you, you can put a rhyme in there if you feel like it. It's all right. Okay, so how do you get started in writing your own sing canes? Well, of course, the first thing you need to do is pick a topic, a subject, an idea, right? Figure out what your sing cane is going to be about. So you could write about something you really like, maybe your favorite thing. Hey, write a sing cane about Minecraft or, or soccer or your dog or, you know, whatever. Um, or just like you could write about something you like, you could write about something you don't like. You know, write a sing cane about homework, <laughs> about cleaning, you know, something like that. Uh, you can write about things you see around you, things that happen to you, places you go, basically anything you like. Now, once you've got your idea, what you want to do is to brainstorm other words and phrases that have something to do with the thing that you are writing about. And, um, you know, just kind of think about, well, what is it you want to say about it? Like if you're writing a sin cane about your dog, uh, do you want to say that he's a messy dog? Do you want to say that you like your dog? Do you want to say that your dog sleeps all the time, chases cats? I don't know. It's up to you. Okay, and remember, sing canes do not need to rhyme, but if you feel like it, it's okay to stick a rhyme in there like I did with tummy and yummy. That's fine. Now, brainstorming. I said you're going to need to brainstorm ideas. So what is brainstorming exactly? Well, it just means that you want to um, write down as many ideas as you can possibly think of. You know, think of everything you could think of that has something to do with the thing that you're writing about. And um, it could be words, it could be phrases, it could be entire sentences, and just write them down. Um, you don't need to worry about having too many ideas. It's better to actually have more ideas than you're going to need. And that way you can pick the ones that fit. Um, so I've got another example sin cane here for you. This one, I decided I was going to write a sin cane about my messy bedroom. Now, uh, so remember, once I've picked the idea, the next step is to brainstorm. And so I thought of a, a, a whole bunch of things that had something to do with my messy bedroom. For example, that there's dirty laundry. Um, there are toys everywhere, all over the place. Um, my mom says, clean it up. <laughs> the hamper is overflowing. Oh, but you know, the funny thing is, um, I don't want to clean my room. I'd rather be watching TV or doing something else. Um, and and the really funny thing about messy rooms is that eh, most people don't seem to mind their own mess, right? So like, I don't mind. I kind of, I like it like this. It's fine. I know where everything is. Yeah. Okay. So now that I've got my ideas brainstormed, let's start creating the messy room sing cane. Now, remember because of the syllables, uh, because you need two, four, six, eight, and two, you can count them on your fingers as you read each line. Um, if a line winds up having too many syllables, then, or not enough syllables, look for words in that line that you can change to make it shorter or make it longer so that it has the exact right number of syllables for that line. Um, you know, once you get your syllable count right, just, you also want to kind of make sure that the poem says what you wanted to say, right? That it, it tells the story that you're trying to tell. So here we go. Messy room, sin cane. My room. Now you notice I didn't say my bedroom because that would have been three syllables and I could only get two. So I said my room is such a mess. Toys all over the place. Mom says, clean up but I like it like this. Now, you might notice in the fourth line of my sing cane, I said, mom says, clean up. Well, originally my line says, said, mom says, clean it up, but I like it, right? But when I counted, I found out I had nine syllables, so I had to get rid of one of them. So I took out the word it and just changed it to mom says, clean up but I like it like this. And that is really all there is to creating your own sin cane. So 
Um, there's one more thing you, you should remember, and that is that the best syncanes sort of tell a story. That is, the, um, the first line just introduces your subject, right? It, it, it could be even the same as the title. The second line is sort of a, a description. The third line is where things start to happen, right? Um, and then the fourth line is where you introduce a feeling, you know? Well, how does that make you feel? Or how does it make uh, the person that you're writing about feel, right? And then the last line is sort of a conclusion. Now, in my messy room syncane, I sort of fudged it a little bit because the the action didn't really start until the fourth line. Mom says, "Clean up," and then the uh, the feeling was part of my conclusion. So that went on to the fourth line and the fifth line. But as a general rule, this is a good way to think of sing canes. Title, description, action, feeling, and conclusion. Okay, so a few more things to remember. Syncanes can be about anything. The syllable counts are two, four, six, eight, and two. Uh, once you've got your idea, then before you start writing, brainstorm. Come up with phrases and words and sentences that have something to do with it. Count your syllables on your fingers if you need to. And, uh, oh, I almost forgot to mention, you want to center your poem on the page. In other words, don't just write it down the left-hand side of the page, but try to write it in the middle of the page. So that way you get that nice diamond or Christmas tree shape. And then, of course, most importantly, have fun. So there you go. Now you can write your own sing canes. I hope you do. I hope you have fun with them. And... Um, have a great day.